All right, class. Like I said, we are going to explain the conductivity also. So here we are going to talk about the conductivity. Conductivity is just the reciprocal of resistivity. When I say reciprocal, meaning the oppositions of resistivity. If the resistivity is the ability to resist or to stop or to, to terminate the flow of electric current in a conductor, therefore conductivity is the opposite, meaning is the ability of a substance to allow the flow of electric current through itself. So the strength to which a conductor allows the passage of electric current is what is called conductivity. And that conductivity is different across the metals. Some metals are very highly conducting, while others are very fairly conducting, while some do not even conduct. Something like wood, sand, and so on and so forth. Plastic, rubber also, do not conduct electricity. In this case, they are, also, they are called poor conductors. They don't conduct at all. Non-conductors, they are called non-conductors, but there are some who can conduct with very light, something like water. Water can conduct electricity with very light. So in this case, they are poor conductors and they are conductors. We have three items. A good conductor, a poor conductor, and non-conductor. A poor conductor is the one that can conduct but very light. Something like water and some other related liquids. While conductors are those ones that can conduct electricity very quick, very, very high. Something like metals. All the metals, liquid metals also can conduct. Electrolytes, they are also conducting materials like sulfuric acid, uh, like salt, common salt, salt solution, sugar solution, uh, lime water. All these ones are liquid conductors. They can, they can conduct electricity, but they are conductivity different. Like sulfuric acid can conduct more of course than lime water. Lime water can conduct like guava, mango, orange, all of them are conductors. They can conduct electricity but very light. They are both still they are conducting. But like sulfuric acid can conduct more of course than them. Mercury as a liquid metal can conduct electricity also, but not as conducting as sulfuric acid and common salt. This salt we use to cook our soups at home is electrolytes. They can conduct electricity easily. Water also made up of H2O, it gives electrical conductivity also. It has electrical conductivity and it can conduct electricity also, but not as good as we expected. So conducting materials must be metal solid, solid metals like aluminium, copper and so on. All of them are conducting materials, but they have conductivity. The ability, the willingness, the zeal of a metal to conduct is what is called conductivity. It is different across the metal, like I said earlier. Now let's see, since we said the reciprocal of resistivity gives conductivity, so even the formula can take that effect. Now, conductivity has symbol alpha. This is the symbol of uh, conductivity. In some textbooks, you see it like this. It's still the same thing. We call it conductivity. Now, this conductivity can be the reciprocal of resistivity. When I say reciprocal of resistivity, meaning 1 over resistivity, which is the same thing as 1 up over AR divided by L. According to mathematics, whenever you see uh, 1 all over A over B, that means 1 divided by A over B, which is the same thing as 1. Convert this to multiplication, swap this one. The numerator becomes denominator and denominator becomes numerator according to mathematics concept. So what we have is 1 times we change this to times, we take B up and take A down. So what we have now is B over A. Once you have 1 over A over B, it is something as B over A. So this idea is what you are going to apply to these expressions to find the conductivity. That is what we are going to have 1 divided by AR all over L. And this is the same thing as 1 times L all over AR, which gives you what? L all over AR. Automatically, our conductivity will be equals to L all over AR. 
you see the reciprocal count. This is the formula for conductivity. Once you put this and this up, this down becomes a receptivity. But the way they are like this, L over A R in the center has conductivity. Every material or every metal has conductivity. At the same time, resistivity. If I have resistivity, I will have conductivity. But it's not every metal also. Oh no, it's not every substance. But mostly metals. Whether liquid metal or solid metals. And some electrolyte that has acidic nature, that has basic nature also. Like salt, there are basic solutions which can conduct electricity. And salt, or acid, sorry, they can conduct because there are conductivity within those substances. So this is it. Let's take an example under conductivity. See how it's going to be. Thank you. Like you said, we are going to solve one example under conductivity. Simple. Look at it. You said, find the conductivity of a material whose resistivity is just 200 ohms meter. So how can we do this? We are going to write solution. First of all, like I said, to every problem, there is solution to that very problem. So, but before then, we have to bring out the data. That is data given. The data means the raw information stated in the question. Bring them down. It will help you solve the problem easily and simply. Now, what we have here is find the conductivity, meaning conductivity is question mark of a material whose resistivity rho equals to 200 ohms meters using a relationship and the relationship is rho equals to okay sorry the relationship between conductivity and resistivity is alpha equals to 1 all over a rho now we have to substitute rho and find our conductivity which gives you 1 over 200. 1 divided by 200 will give us uh, 200 into 1 is 0. Point. You add 0 here. 200 into 10 it can't put 0. Add 0 here. 200 into 100 0. You put 1 again. 1 0 again. Making 1000. Then 200 into 1000 is 5. Now the SI unit of conductivity is the reciprocal of the SI unit of resistivity. In the SI unit of resistivity, like I gave you, is arms meter. So that of conductivity will be 1 over arms meter, which gives you uh, uh, which gives you per arms per meter. Which gives you per arm per meter. So the SI unit is per ohms per meters so that is the SI unit of conductivity simply don't rely on this very example I've given you this shortly so that you can understand how to do it sometimes this data or these things will not be given you are going to be given a kind of different information where you have to understand how to go about that solution if there is any need to borrow a formula somewhere borrow it to solve the problem Sometimes in physics, you'll be given a problem where a mathematics or chemistry idea needs to be employed first before finding the solution to that issue. So simply and as ABCD. This one is a simple example, but there are some examples which you may possibly see in your exam. So how about to do school physics? All these informations are there. Go and get them. It's for you. Don't wait to, for me to give you what I told you earlier, what you require is cannot be gotten exactly from me. I can give you only 50, 60, 70 to 80 percent. The remaining 20 percent should be done by you as a student, a serious student calling ahead of a teacher. I'm advising you to read ahead of me since you have an access to textbook. Simple. Thank you. Let's move and see how we can explain fields and its types. Thank you. All right. Like I said, we are going to explain field. When I say a field, a field means a portion, a region, where a phenomena can be found. A field or a field, it just is space 
where an event takes place. Now, we have the type of field, and the type of field are just three. There are three, we have three types of field. Number one, electric field. Number two, magnetic field. And number three, gravitational field. Now, as we relate this field to this phenomena, the field now becomes a force. That's the reason why sometimes it is called electrical force field, magnetic force field, and gravitational force field. Now let's take electrical force field. Let's take electrical force field. Electrical force field can be defined as a region or space or a place where electrical properties or electrical force can be found there. You can find electrical force in that space. Once you have seen electrical force in that space, the place becomes electrical force field. field. So electrical field or electric field can be defined as a region or space where electric properties, electric properties can be find there. You can find electrical properties there at that point. That would make it to be electric what is make that what make it to be or that what makes it to be an electric force field. Now we have an example also. This electrical force field normally starting from positive charge or positive conductors getting out from here. There are forces that I cannot see only with a magnified or magnifying glass like microscope, telescope and so on and so forth. These are the only gadgets that you can use to see this field but it always comes out from a positive charge waves, positive charge conductors. A negative charge conductor absorbs, it absorbs electrical field. So production of electric field starting from a positive conductor and ending to negative conductor. It's not a magic. Once you raise a positive wire here, those fields are coming out from the wire. They are going out of the wire once it is positive. Where are they going to stop? They are not stopping at anywhere. Unless if there is a close by metal. If there is metal close to you, that's where the field will attach. And that metal become a negative terminal. To every movement of a positive field or to every movement of an electric field, there is a target and the target is negative wire. If there is no any negative wire close, then it will attract to any metal close by. And that metal stands to be the negative wire for it. So they are going non-stop. They move non-stop. Where they stop is the metal. Now assuming you have a positive you have a positive wire here. There is always production of field. There is always production of field everywhere. And that wire. Is that clear? Do you know that this field cannot stop at anywhere? If there is a metal here, this field will come round and attract this metal. This field will come round and attract this metal. And they don't cross anybody. The two of them cannot cross each other. Field, one of the properties even of a field, the line of forces or the line of the field cannot cross, cannot intersect as in this is a field moving. This one cannot come and cross this one. No, it cannot. They move with, a, with an equal distance between them. None of the field line cross each other. No, they don't cross. They move with an equal distance between them. That means they are parallel to each other. Do you really get what I'm saying? So this is what is called electric field. 
they always start from positive and end at negative. Wherever the negative is, that field must reach that place. Even if the distance is from here to Kaduna, if they can move to the Kaduna, they will have to move and attract to that metal. It's obvious we see that we don't have any metal clusters. No, we have metals, so that's the reason why whenever you subject a positive wire, there is productions of field and that field can be attracted by any metal close by. And that metal stands to be the negative charge. So this is it, and that's what we have. So apart from this explanation, I think we have what is called a magnetic field. A magnetic field is a force field, or is a force field related to magnets. It can be defined as a region or space where magnetic properties can be found there. It's a region or space where magnetic effects can be seen. That's what is called magnetic field. And we have, uh, this is a magnet, assuming. This is North Pole, this is South Pole. A magnetic field line, of course, they are starting from North Pole. They are starting from North Pole and end to, uh, to the positive, uh, and end to the South Pole, sorry. That means they are here, coming out, coming out, coming out, and they are entering here. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. So, they come here and trap. They come here. This one come here. I hope you understand. So, this is how it moves. They are starting from negative, uh, they are starting from North Pole and end to the South Pole. This is stand to be our positive, while this is stand to be our negative. First field starts from positive and magnetic field start from North Pole. So automatically North Pole is the same as positive terminal in case of electricity. While the South Pole stands to be the negative terminal in case of electricity. So these are the uh, description of magnetic field and bar magnet possesses this field. So the strength of the field is here and here. And this place, the strength of the field is lower. If the strength of the field here is 100%, this place should be like 80% and this is also 100%. That means the magnetic field is maximum in the poles, in the south pole and north pole. That's where the magnetic field is maximum. You see, that's the reason why in some textbook, you see the magnetic field here or a magnetic uh, bar with some fields here, maximum, with some fields here, with some fields here. You see, with fields coming out, I hope you understand. With fields here, maximum in the pause. If you remember your test books, your physics test book, when you check back, you will see it here. That means to the pause, the magnetic field or attraction is maximum. When you have two magnets, when you try to connect them within the pulse, the connection or attraction is maximum done. When you try to connect them in the middle of the magnet. So this is what is called magnetic field. Now let's see how we can explain the gravitational force field. Gravitational force field is also a force by which an uh, uh, object is attracted towards the center of the earth. This is a world, assuming our earth. Assuming this is a ground level. In this space, there are forces coming down. And those forces are God-made forces. Nobody created those forces. It's God made that forces and they are moving downward to the center of the edge. They are attracting every object with a great force and that force is gravitational force. And those line of forces are called fields, but they are called gravitational force fields. It can be defined as a region, space or place where gravitational force is thin. So that what is called gravitational force field. Every object is attracted by those fields. Where are they taking us to? To the center of the earth. Once a mango ride, it will fall down. Why is it falling down? Is because there are maximum forces pushing that mango downward. If the mango come, it will hit ground and stop here. Imagine if there is a wave 
that is Rigia. If there is a well down here, if the mango comes, will it stay here? It can't. The mango will start moving downward. If this well is endless, this mango will keep on moving endlessly till the end of our life. Nobody will know when the mango will stop moving. Why? Because the gravitational force is acting on the mango downward to the center of the earth. Do you know the center of the earth? Nobody knows the center of the earth. It's a core where there is a magnetic force there which is very very strong and that magnetic force is also stands to be the gravitational force of attraction of objects toward the center of the earth. That magnetic core, that core magnet is attracting objects toward it. So that is the description of gravitational force field. For more details on gravitational force field, I want you to refer back to textbooks. There are so many explanations, there are so many relevant information on this gravitational force field. So this is what we have for the day. Assignment will follow in the class, inshallah.